and I wish it wasn't out of line to tell him so. The waiter never seems to get my order right. Seems like I got to complain almost every night. How much longer can I take this abuse? I try to be nice, but what's the use? When I'm the only one that does anything right. Sometimes it seems like the world is run by chimpanzees. Even though some of them might come. But I think I can say with obvious conviction that in this old world, everybody's wrong but me. Welcome to Uncommon Sense. My name is Charlotte Laws, and today we're going to be discussing the 2008 presidential election, Proposition 13, some of the most bizarre things found on eBay, and the fattest people in the world. But first, I'd like to introduce my esteemed panelists. We have Mr. Charles Parcell, who is an attorney and mediator, and happens to be my husband. And we have Mr. Garrett Swain, who full is- Full disclosure. <laughs> full disclosure. <laughs> And Garrett Swain, who is a singer-songwriter and who has never been my husband. Welcome to Full the show. <laughs> 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 so I thought we'd dive into the first topic, which has to do with eBay. And there was a woman from Australia who uh, found out her husband was cheating on her and found the Tarts knickers in the bed with the package of the, endom the empty condom package. Uh -huh. And so she put this on eBay. She actually wanted to sell the underwear, but eBay has a policy against selling used underwear, thank goodness. So she put a photo of the underwear on eBay, and it sold. And the buyer said they were so big, you could make a shawl out of them. <laughs> 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 so I'm wondering, do you, ever, do you ever go on to eBay? Do you ever see unusual things? Do you? <laughs> Are you eBayers? Is one of my questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've bought a few things on eBay. You have? Uh, um, mostly pictures of bras. Uh, ah. You know, that. that <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have both bought and sold on eBay, but I want to challenge you on, one, on something you said. You referred to the, the lady's knickers. You said she was a tart. Why did you do that? Because that was the, that was the that phrase. Was the it, it, she was Australian, term. and they used the word tart, and they used the word knickers, both in Australia and England, I believe, which is where you're from, is, is England. And you lived in Australia. True enough, yes. But there are some I very mean, unusual things that I found that were, have been on eBay. There was a che Cheerio, you know, Cheerio cereal. One Cheerio sold for $50. Now, well, okay, can I just ask you, why would anybody pay to buy a picture of someone's knickers on eBay? That's what I find bizarre. Well, How much did they fetch? I don't know. See, that was not in the article. So I have to assume that they didn't sell for much. But there were other things on eBay. They had a human soul. It started at 99 cents. It never sold. A human soul? A human soul was up on eBay. How can you sell a human soul? How, you know, <laughs> well, you can't. What, what do you take title, how do you take title to it? How can you sell it? You sell it on eBay, of course, if you can find a buyer. There was a guy that put his forehead up for advertising space. He sold it for $37,000 to a snoring company. And now there's an airline. The, a snoring company. The New Zealand Air, and this is not on eBay, but they're off, they want bald men to offer their heads up for $666, and they're going to put a tattoo, a removable tattoo, on their bald heads advertising New Zealand Air. Six hundred and sixty-six dollars. That's how much they'll get now, for it. I'm wondering enough, which why is that? that number. Yeah, because the sign of the devil. Exactly. Exactly. It's, Garrett and I were onto that. Yeah, but that's flash. when you that's and when also you then switch it to American Australia. dollars. It's actually not true. When it's in New Zealand dollars, it's a different amount. Just also, so you know. Also, I always thought that such those Australian <laughs> ladies are called Sheilas. They are. You're Sheilas, right. Yeah, not, Sheilas. Not tarts. Oh. Well, um, Sheila she, is like a Jane. It's like what we call <laughs> any. In the average gene. <laughs> well, I'm going to move on to fat. Good and idea. the fattest child in the world, who happens to be seven years old, guess how fat this child is? Oh, this is frightening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, say, um, seven years old. Seven years old. 
225 pounds. Higher. Oh, no. Three, four, 350 pounds? No, 488 pounds. How can a child that's It's amazing. She can't run. She drags herself around the floor. She eats 15 hamburgers a day. She eats potato chips for breakfast. And my question to you, is this child abuse? Is this child neglect? Should her parents be held responsible for yes. this weight? Yes, yes, The and mother yes. says she loves the How child. How much does the feels, mother weigh? Uh, you know, they didn't say that in the article, so I'm not really sure. But I would usually bet families come kind of together. To, <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, but if you said, if you, if you talked about someone six foot six, who's 400 and how many pounds? That's still 488 a lot. 488 pounds. You see that? I, there's something wrong with this picture. It's impossible, isn't it? I'm 6'2", and I only weigh 375. <laughs> In You're 6'2", and you weigh about 200 and... No, no he weighs less than that. 180? No, I weigh about 200 pounds. I'm, I'm actually yeah. 6 6'. I'm actually 5'12". It's, it's so hard to imagine a... A seven-year-old, because that's... I know. I know. And in England, actually, they're sending uh, letters home to parents who have obese children. If you have, like, a <clears> five-year-old <throat> that's obese, you actually get a letter. And if you are obese in childhood, it's like an 80% chance you're going to be obese in adulthood. <laughs> Guess what the <clears throat> fattest man in the world? He's a Mexican guy. Guess what he weighs? Uh, he weighs something like... Well, he lost... He lost, he lost weight. weight, right? Is he down to 1,200 pounds now? No, well, actually, he was originally 1,235 pounds. Now right. he's down to 700 pounds, and he wanted to go on a picnic. They had to forklift him out of the house on a truck, and it didn't happen. Uh, uh, some something went wrong, and he couldn't go on his date. Oh, I thought he went. I read that he went. I mean, well, I mean, he might have went again. I, but I, he can't walk, and it's it's yeah. really it's. But he's a celebrity in Mexico, and uh, he eats a lot of junk food too. So we'll he, go to we'll go to a more serious topic. Did you? Twelve hundred pounds is. I know it's hard to imagine. It's the equivalent of six garrets. Right. A, a six. I, mean, you can, I weigh you about can lose a thousand pounds, <clears throat> and still be overweight. <laughs> you know. <That's> true. <laughs> How tall is he? How tall is he? he didn't say. I don't know. Uh, I, it's really... It doesn't matter, does it really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this is, a, uh, well, this is like we're, we're talking about silly subjects today. Those are silly. Well, we also are going to talk about Prop 13. And I know that um, we have disagreements on this particular topic. Prop 13 has been in place since 1978. It was started by Howard Jarvis, which was a taxpayer activist. And it means that property, um, the tax is 1% of the property value. It can go up 2% percent per year and if you want to change the tax you have to have two-thirds of the vote from the constituency have to vote to change the law or the, the tax law in some way and now I know you can, are can against I just, can I just say a, a further implication of it is that if you buy a house on a block you know in 19 uh, 1975 and it cost you forty thousand dollars right you're paying tax on the forty thousand dollars if somebody buys an identical house, or somebody comes in and mm -hmm. buys that house in nineteen in in two thousand and seven, eight, right. eight for four hundred for you know six hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, they're paying tax on the six hundred thousand right. dollars. So even though they're exactly the same property, one pays much greater tax than the other. And that's, right, it's based that's on one of the, the sales controversial price. one of the controversial right. aspects of. Property. Exactly. And, you know, there, there are other reasons why people don't like it, because they feel the schools are not getting as much money. And, and Charles, you believe it's unfair, as I recall. I mean, you don't like Prop 13, is what I recall, because I actually do support it, and you don't support it. So. Well, I, I, I don't have a problem with property taxes being fixed at a certain percentage, which is 1% in the case of Prop 13. What I'm against is wholly irrational tax policies for an entire state. This also, this particular state, is the world's sixth or so largest economy. Um, and it needs to be run in a rational way. The, 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 all, the po all the polls say that the public are totally fed up with the politicians in Sacramento. But I've met those politicians, lots of them. They're intelligent. They're doing their best. The system is really, really unworkable. And now we have a Prop 13. It's been going on for 30 years, yes. But no one said, OK, if, this is going to, if we're going to distort the system by having this particular limit, then how are we going to raise money? No, for 30 years our communities have been struggling with that question and have not found an answer. Well, we've had a bustling economy, and a lot of them <coughs> say it's people say it's because of Prop 13, and also obviously it creates stability to neighborhoods, and and people know what they're paying. I think it's completely rational. Well, I think it's irrational to get rid of Prop 13. The pr Prop 13 came about because. Um, housing prices just kept going up and up and up, and 
people were being basically taxed out of their homes. Mm -hmm. Older people uh, on fixed incomes. Older people on fixed incomes could not pay their taxes right. uh, as they were being raised. So they thought this was, and, and in many ways people thought that state government and local government was being really financed on the backs of those who owned, who owned houses and those who rented didn't pay, you know, didn't have to pay. Right. Uh, so uh, this was just a way of limiting Government. But, you know, it's very frightening in other states. I mean, if you look at the policies, I mean, one example, when I went back to visit my aunt who lives in Maryland, her taxes on her house the previous year had been $2,000. And the day I got there, she got her new tax bill for the next year, and it was $6,000. And I just couldn't even believe that they put up with that. And it's just willy-nilly. It literally can be whatever the government officials decide they want it to be. And there are other states, too, that have very high amounts of tax. Um, Colorado, <coughs> it's 8% of the value of the house, Mississippi, 10%. Ten, ten I mean, if Every year? That's, what's, that's what it said that they pay. Yeah, they have very, very high tax amounts. It's what... Um, well, so probably their houses are not, not that Maybe expensive. they're not as expensive, but, you know, I mean, that would really greatly determine what you could pay for a house. I mean, you'd really have to reduce the amount of money you were spending on a property if you were going to be paying that kind of tax. So it's pretty high. And um, I think we're really lucky, and it's really important that we keep Prop 13 in California for a lot of reasons. I mean, it really does help our economy, and it keeps people where they know what they're getting into when they know that they can afford their, their tax payments. I don't think you have a shred of evidence for the assertion that it helps our economy. But I would like to say, and I'd like to repeat this, because I know this may be brought up against me at another time, <laughs> perhaps over dinner, <laughs> is I'm not, per se, I'm not against a 1% tax on the value of a house seems quite a bit to me. Um, I'm against the irrationality which has meant over the last 30 years a stunningly dramatic decline in the quality of our education. And a state w whose finances are just totally all at sea. I, all I might the take time. issue with the, that being the, the cause of the, the decline yeah, in, our, I would, in our quality I agree with of our Garrett. education. Look, I think, I mean, you would think that we don't have, think because the schools don't have enough money. We are spending way more money than they do in Belgium per student. And the Belgian students, in Belgium they spend about $3,000 per student, and they're beating the pants off of, of us. They know more about American history than, than American students know. <laughs> and uh, way more. You know, the reason why I think that it, I mean, it, w would it be rational if government could willy nilly say, oh, this year you're going to pay 50% of your income tax, you know, a 50% income tax. Oh, next year, it might be 70%. Oh, the year next year it'll be the 20%. You but wouldn't have that, any it'll idea. Only be 10%, so it's don't the worry. same kind of an idea. You don't want to have something where you can't you know, plan for what your payments are going to be. Well, I entirely agree with you. Don't think I'm against you in any way. Charlotte. Well, good. I won. Okay, but next I topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I guess the, these tax things are so complicated. And, uh, well, the fair tax is the answer to everything. Yeah, and we, we talked about and that And the before. theory, well, I, I, I agree you can't say an exact cause and effect between Prop 13 and decline in education, but... Uh, School choice is the answer, but that's a different show and a different, a different topic because we're not different talking topic. education. But let's go on to the election. And we have Sarah Palin, who's been chosen as the vice presidential candidate for John McCain. And do you think this is a step back for women, like so many people are asserting? A step back? On what basis would it be a step back? Because of her positions, because of being pro-life rather than pro-choice, because well, of well, it's, just the whole package. I, I think it's a step forward in the sense that, you know, there's a, there's a woman being... Uh, mm -hmm. on the platform. It may be a step back in that for many women her position doesn't doesn't reflect the position of many women. I, I really don't know what the figures are. I wasn't really excited about her choice uh, for John. I, I like John McCain and I think he chose to uh, he chose to really you know s you know try to sweep up all the support he could from the right hoping that he's co you know, considered enough of a centrist the people in the middle will vote for him. I think that may be a mistake. Uh, we'll see. Well, it was a smart political decision. I mean, I, mean, I, I you know. If he wins, I'm, I'm you'll prepared say yes. to say that in a certain way it's a step backwards because I believe that Sarah Palin was chosen substantially because she's a woman. Uh, and that if she'd been right. a male governor of Alaska, no way would she have been chosen. So That's I would true. like to see 
women chosen, not on the basis that they're women, but on the basis that they're excellent choices. And I would certainly say that about Hillary Clinton. She lost in a fair fight, but she was right up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the danger is kind of like affirmative action, isn't it, to say, Oh, let's pick her just because she's a woman and she'll, she'll get some of the Hillary vote, I believe that. Well, no, she, I would, she would not was, have been chosen. I actually don't think that was his motivation. And also, let I me do. say this because I, I, I know you're going to give me a Partially, hard time on this. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm against affirmative action at all. What I'm, <laughs> I'm saying is that choosing <laughs> some... He's so political, you know. I know, like, I want to be He's so worried that he's so, going to be misinterpreted. I know, because I, now I see that these <coughs> presidential candidates, something they said 23 years ago at some dinner party in Ohio, is... It's like <laughs> lipstick on a pig. <laughs> it's like it was <laughs> captured on camera. What, what's, your, what's your point? I'm sorry. My point is that um, <gasps> she was... Cha I, mean, she, I mean, she's a good, strong Republican. And, but, but merely because she's a... That's not the reason she was chosen. Part of the reason, anyway, is because... They wanted to get some of the, the yep. women the women vote by saying, look, we've now got a woman on the platform. I right. think it's a step forward for women in general because she's now the second vice presidential ca mm -hmm. candidate after Geraldine Ferraro. Right. So that you, yes, since women make up fifty percent of the population, she would have. Um, they should be. You know, we'd like to see a lot more woman representation. I think it's a step forward. I mean, I I, I absolutely think she's a disaster. Had as had a had, o but had I think Obama it the chosen door. Hillary as uh, v vice president. I don't think he, uh, McCain would have chosen Sarah Palin. I agree with that yeah. analysis, yes. Yeah, I agree. And, um, yeah. But I think McCain picked her because, you know, one, he wanted to throw a bone to the conservatives to the right. and say, okay, I got your pro-life person, now leave me alone, I'm running as a maverick, and don't bother me anymore. Right, right, right. She also has a little bit of a maverick record herself, so he right, really liked right. that. I don't think the Hillary voters were the main thing, but I think he thought I can maybe get he some of those blue-collar people. He will get a few. You yeah. know, from yeah. Ohio and right. some of those swing states. And I think that that was, yeah, and he might get a few. It was so. probably a good choice. But the only thing is, I don't know, I still don't know enough about her. I've only, they've only like let her out to say certain things. And, right. and uh, I'd like to see her, you know, in an impromptu kind of. Uh, well, she did the interview. She well, did she's that. She's a I, classic I Republican, it. really. She's a classic conservative Republican. She interviewed with Charlie Gibson in the last couple of days. Yeah, I didn't see that. have been showing snippets of the that. interview. So she's not a, a disaster if you're a Republican. Well, she's a disaster on animal and environmental issues. So, of course, she's a disaster to me. And I can't vote the ticket, even though I love John McCain. I'm not voting the ticket now because no. of Sarah Palin. Really? You're going to vote for Obama? I don't know what I'm going to do at this oh, point. Oh, but listen, i got to say. You love him in the platonic sense. <laughs> who? You love who? Yeah, I do love him in the platonic who? sense. Who? Kind of John his, McCain. John McCain. Oh, John McCain. I thought you meant Obama. I like Obama because I could see him kind of as a philosopher you, king type. You, oh, that's what I thought did you, you see, meant. Did you oh, see the, okay. Yeah, I could did see Did you see that, that Obama's type. interview with uh, O'Reilly? Um, I saw parts of it. Obama is awesome. <laughs> he is, he, he is, he's, the thing is, what I feel about Obama is that he's like, he's like sort of where I was politically maybe 10 years ago. He's mm -hmm. got all this liberal idealism. He, it hasn't yet occurred to him the shortcomings of liberalism, mm -hmm. it had, you know, but, but he's got all these, these, he's just a bit naive. I think in about 10 years, he's going to be a completely awesome, ready to govern candidate. Right now, I still think that, that McCain is the, is the man of the hour. Yeah. But in about 10 years, Obama is going to be, um, he's going to be so wise and you know, so circumspect and 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 capable to make uh, such great. Right now, some of his ideas are really naive, mm -hmm. like the idea we're gonna, you know, we'll pay for all these programs by we'll tax corporations. That's not going to affect anybody else, you know, right. unless you ever need to buy anything made by a corporation. No, I think he would know. be bad for the economy. I think Obama could hurt the economy, yeah. and I think that McCain's but a better choice. He doesn't you're, get you're he doesn't get you know some of the shortcomings of, but they're well, very I, I, enthusiastic I, I, and well you know I well just, attentioned. Just let me say, I could not agree with you less. So the last eight years of Republican rule have been good for the economy. No, oh I think no, Bush no, has been no, a disaster. no, Bush is Bush is worse than. But McCain Obama. is not like Bush. There's not McCain even a comparison. McCain is, is so not at all. He's, like, he's Bush. like more like a Democrat than a Republican in many ways. Oh, you see. But I, our, our, I'm hearing nothing but. but straight down the middle Republican lines like what? from John McCain in all, in all aspects. Like what? And, like uh, what? And the theory that, uh, that the Demo a Democratic administration will be bad for the economy, I think, is wholly without foundation. I'm not saying, no, not any, any Democratic, uh, not any Democratic thing. But Obama's idea of, of gonna... like, um, just 
<laughs> believing that you can tax corporations without consequence, and it, you know, and that's how we can fill up, or, you know, that's how we can fill up our coffers. You have to be a little bit wiser than that. It's it's got to require spending cuts as well, or 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 you know, serious reconsiderations of how we you know efficiently you know, fund programs and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, well, I would say that the politicians for the last 25, 30, 40, 500 years could have been thinking about that. Absolutely. Now you say, oh, Obama's going to wreck the economy. Excuse no, me. No, well, I mean... <laughs> well, our, our politicians overpaid, and we already talked about this a little bit previously. And, and that's like saying, anyway, that, uh, you know, the President of the United States determines the course of the economy. I don't think so. That's, that's true. That's true. You're right that's about true. that. You're right about that. A lot of that. times they, you know, they get, you know, they take the credit. Clinton took the credit for eight years of prosperity. Right. When, in fact, you know, he just happened to wake up with a Ferrari in the driveway <laughs> and take it for a spin. <laughs> and, uh, and because, you know, the, you know, communism had ended and, you know, the Cold War and computer technology were was was uh, you know just coming into a place where it was really enabling these quantum leaps forward in productivity and that's mm -hmm. why there was all this prosperity it's not and you know clinton had the sense to not do anything terribly stupid to get in the way of it mm -hmm. and balance but, the federal yeah. budget are we well, going to give him a little credit for that well <laughs> you're like you an angry you have, liberal charles but charles <laughs> you have to really give the republican majority in congress that really held his feet to the fire that made him do that and, and it wasn't, and he wasn't exactly gracious about sharing credit for that. Do you think he wanted to institute welfare reform? He was. <laughs> do you think he, you know, it was the, it was the, uh, you know, the Republican Congress in many ways held his feet to the fire, and together. So these people, do they make too much money? I'm <laughs> right, going to the right. next topic. Do they make? Oh, so. So this is a th now. We, last year on the tax returns, I believe John McCain made about two hundred fifty thousand, but his wife made six million. Right. Uh, the Obamas made about four point two million. But the actual salary that you make as a congressperson or a senator is about what a congressperson makes one hundred sixty nine thousand a year. Uh -huh. The president makes about four hundred thousand a year. In local government, it's it, not too yeah. Yeah, I mean local government, it's very low. I mean the, the LA what, City what Council the, makes more than any other city council, and they make one hundred fifty thousand. What does Via Ragosa make? Um, I, I don't know, but I'm guessing it's around what the L.A. City Council makes um, okay. per and member. The, and the politicians in Sacramento and, are less than that. Oh, it's, yeah. I mean, it's 110000 yeah. in no, Sacramento. No, I don't think they make too much money. And then other places, it's really a joke. I mean, Georgia, it's 16000 a year to be in the state assembly. Right. Um, Alabama, $3,600 a year. So no, I don't think that they, you know, their salaries are too high. Many of them uh, have uh, other businesses that they, they do well in. And, right. But that's, not, that's none of my business. I mean, the ever. average CEO apparently makes $10,982,000 a year, which is amazing. Right. And um, I mean, I don't. I don't. That's not even for a good one. <laughs> that's right. They're not that's very many who, good ones. That's for a guy who loses loses money. You know, <laughs> the thing is, you know, this guy, the president of some corporation that lost thirty million dollars last year, you know, get, you know, gets a, gets a one point two million dollar bonus. You know, I know. I could have lost. I could have only lost uh, twenty million, and uh, I would have taken half the bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and they work very hard, as Charles knows, and I know, and you may know too. I mean, they're working. CEOs? Po politicians, politicians work very hard oh, yeah. at night and day, and I mean, it's pretty much I don't a, think they're overpaid. Yeah, I agree they're with you. A lot, of, a lot of people feel that they are. And um, it was interesting. I read an article from a guy that... Well, a lot of people are idiots. That... <laughs> I read, Am I, right? I read an article. Um, no, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he's always politically correct when he's on TV. <laughs> That's his rule. That right? <laughs> um, um, how should I phrase that then? If, 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 if just if, say if they're not idiots, uh, what would be a better, a more politically correct way of saying? Well, I think part of the uh, annoyance with politicians um, comes out in the in in the statement that they get over they're overpaid, but. That's not really the problem. People don't really go into politics to make a lot of money. Right. That's not their motivation. They have other motivations. Well, there's a lot of power in politics, power, but yeah. I think that people that generally do it do care about really some, making yeah, things I better. Think, I, think I think a think lot most of them do. do. There's at least some component of the, the desire to serve. In, but there was an article I read about people that this particular author thought that certain occupations were overpaid because they simply just didn't do enough to warrant that kind of money. And the people on the list, he had wedding photographers, 
He had uh, sky caps at the airports. Wedding photographers make about 1900 to 2500 per wedding. A sky cap makes wow. about 70 to 100,000 a year. Uh, a longshoreman, West Coast longshoremen make 100 the dock workers make 112,000 a year and if you're a foreman you get 177,000 a year. It's pretty hard year. work though, isn't it? No, I agree. I mean, I'm not saying this is the case, but this I just sky read an caps, article that Sky caps make that much money? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they do. Make pretty good money. So, um, next topic is airport security scans, which now can see all of your body parts. <laughs> <laughs> and they do say that employees can't see your face because it's blurred and they can't print or save the image. But how do you feel about having your body parts exposed at the airport when you're about to get on an airline? I love it. <laughs> it kind of gives you a, like a little high, right, Karen? <laughs> well, you, have, you still can be pat down. You have this option. Yeah. You can pick A or B. Oh, really? You know, be pat down. Or so I, 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 I'm going on an airport. I'm going on an airline. Uh, I'm going to be flying out next Wednesday. I'm going to be. They're going to be. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. I think it's, it's not, not, every not everybody. They'll look at you. They go, ooh, what a hunk. We we'll better, do. We <laughs> you better, better scan, scan him. him. Well, no. I, I mean, would you? Your choice is between being scanned and being patted down. I know. I think being scanned might be better. And not those are neither very good choices. Well, your th your your third choice is to be blown up, which I, <laughs> which I think is the worst of all. <laughs> well, I don't know. To it's avoid that, I wouldn't mind being both scanned and patted down. Right. And they also have a shoe scanner they're trying out at LAX, too. So. Just to spare you from having to, to take your shoes off? And the, and the last thing I was going to try to get in before, because we're almost out of time, huh. is the Internet. Oh. And <laughs> the Internet. <laughs> such as, a small topic. The Internet, the as internets, our president calls them. And security on the Internet, which now is there's some big holes where websites can be taken you can like log on to like Bank of America and all of a sudden you end up on some fraudulent site where they can get your information. Oh, phishing, you're talking about. Well, it's not phishing. It's actually where they can get, you think you're putting in like an, a certain IP, you put in an address, uh, but the number has been changed by some person illegally. Uh, and so it goes elsewhere. But we'll talk about that next time because naturally I ran out of time and I didn't even give you a chance to talk. I'm really sorry. But I want to thank you so much for being on the show. <laughs> and um, I will see you next time. I That's hope we okay. brought some uncommon sense into your life. As you putter through your day, remember, everybody's wrong but me. And See me. you next time. And him, and him. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Hey, well. All right. Sometimes it seems like the world is run by chimpanzees. Even though some of them might come. It's getting hard to separate the facts from fiction But I think I can say with obvious conviction That in this old world, everybody's wrong but me Everybody's wrong to disagree with me That really chaps my eye I thought it all through so very carefully There's no point in considering the other side